Hey there, photographers, Brenda Patrell here, and welcome to another episode of Photo Pills Friday, where we unlock the power of the Photo Pills app and help you learn it without all the confusion. In this week's quick tip video, we're going to learn how to find the adjusted sunrise and set times, or adjusted moonrise and moonset times, when you're photographing at an altitude higher than your subject. The rise and set times of the sun and moon are based on the latitude and longitude of your location. However, elevation or altitude also play a role in determining when you experience the rising or the setting of the sun over the horizon. The higher you are in altitude, the rising of the sun or moon will appear earlier and the setting of the sun or moon will appear later than if you were at sea level, for example. And the reason this occurs is because of the curvature of the earth and how it affects our perception of where the horizon is, which can just be thought of as the farthest point that we can see where the earth meets the sky. So if you are on top of a mountain and plan to photograph the sun or moon while it's rising or setting over the horizon, then how do you account for the change in altitude when determining the actual rise and set times? Photopills has a way to figure this out, so let's dive into the planner and see how this works. As an example, let's plan a sunrise from Haleakala National Park on Maui Island in Hawaii. It's an inactive volcano with a summit of close to 10,000 feet that you can either hike to or drive up to to catch the sunrise. And it's actually pretty incredible. We did it many years ago before I was doing any photography. And it was one of those moments where I really wished I knew how to make a good photograph. Anyway, I've saved the summit of Haleakala as a point of interest in Photopills. So I'll load it into the planner now by just clicking on load at the bottom, point of interest, Haleakala Summit Building. And now my red pin is placed at the summit of the volcano. And the altitude at this point is 9,990 feet. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see that the terrain is a little bit varied before it reaches the ocean to the east where the sun will be rising. And it's a good practice to study the area to see whether there are any peaks between your shooting location and where the horizon will be that may block the sunrise at the horizon. But because I know this is a popular place, I can just hop on over to Google Earth and get a 3D view of it to get a sense of possible obstacles. Now, just as a quick side note, if you're planning a remote shot where you might not be able to get a good 3D view on Google Earth or Street View, then you would either need to study topographical maps of the region or you could use the black pin in Photopills to assess the altitude of various high points in the terrain between you and the horizon. And you can check out episode 16 if you wanna learn more about how to use the black pin. So let's just take a quick look at Google Earth to see what this area looks like to the east. So I've got the summit of Haleakala pinned on the map and when I switch to 3D mode, I can now move my view around in 3D. And if I hold shift while dragging the mouse, mouse around, I can move the vertical and horizontal orientation of my view to get a better sense of the terrain. If I orient my view to the east, I can get a sense of the view at sunrise. And I can see that there is one peak that might be tall enough to break the horizon from my viewpoint, depending on the azimuth of the sunrise. So I'll note the name of this peak, which is Hanaka'uni. Now let's see if this peak would get in the way of sunrise at the horizon using photopills. So I'm just going to zoom in a little on the map until I find the name of that peak. And there it is. And I can also see now that it won't interfere with the sunrise since the thick yellow line, which represents the azimuth of the sunrise on this date is a little further south than the peak. So my view of the sunrise at the horizon should not be obstructed by anything from my shooting location. So now make sure you scroll to the fourth panel of the top bar to view the sunrise and set times for this date, which I currently have set as September 1st. And it looks like sunrise will be at 6.09 a.m. and sunset will be at 6.40 p.m. But note that by default, these sunrise and sunset times are determined by latitude and longitude alone and not the altitude of the red pin. So to account for the altitude of our shooting location, just click on more at the bottom and then click on horizon. 
and then click on adjust for height above horizon. And now you'll see a little graphic and a blue pin will appear on the map. You can think of the blue pin as the horizon pin and you want to place the blue pin wherever you think the horizon should be, which again is where the earth appears to touch the sky from your viewpoint. In our example, this would be the ocean. So I'm just going to zoom out and put the blue pin towards the east in the ocean. If I couldn't see the water from my shooting location, then I would just put the blue pin on where I think the horizon may be a good distance away from the red pin. And PhotoPills provides a theoretical visibility distance at the bottom of the graphic in gray font. And you could use this as a guide for how far away to put the blue pin. So it's basically how far away you should theoretically be able to see the horizon if there's no obstructions from the red pin's altitude, but this number doesn't account for things like weather or pollution or anything else that might limit your visibility. So it's really just a guide. But since I know that the ocean isn't gonna change in altitude past the shoreline, it's just sea level, then I can put the blue pin anywhere in the water and I don't need to go so far out in the ocean. The graphic also shows the altitude of the blue pin, which at sea level is obviously zero, and the distance between my red and blue pins, which is 23.2 miles. And this number is helpful if I was trying to get close to the theoretical visibility distance. Also, if you have access to more accurate altitude information, say from a local map or something, then you can always enter that number manually by tapping on the altitude number and then you can type it into the keypad. The graphic also lists the height above the horizon, which is just the difference in altitude between the red and blue pins. So if I was to move my blue pin, say on land at a higher elevation than sea level, then you can see that the height above horizon number has been recalculated. Okay, now click on done and note that in the fourth panel of the top bar, our sunrise and sunset times have been adjusted. So sunrise is now at 6.01 a.m. and sunset is now at 6.48 p.m. So on this date, at this location of the red pin, the sunrise and sunset times changed by eight minutes from the rise and set times at sea level. Also note that if you tap on the red pin, you're not just given the altitude of the red pin, but you're now also given the height above the horizon, which again is just the difference between the altitudes of the red and blue pins. Uh, just a quick note, you can also use this same tool for planning moonrise and moonset images as well. Now, I should point out that the sun and moon rise and set times are only affected by altitude when your shooting location is higher in altitude than the horizon. So if you're planning an image where your shooting location is lower in altitude than your subject, say for instance, if you're in the middle of the mountains and you're on one peak and you wanna photograph a nearby peak, but that nearby peak is higher than the peak you're on, then you need to use a different method to figure out when you would be able to see the sun or moon above that mountain. And I'll show you an example of how to do this in next week's episode. So stay tuned, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.